Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the Hoover Explained. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please subscribe. So what is the Hoover? Let's break that down. First of all, in narcissistic abusive cycle terms, the Hoover is when the relationship has ended and the narcissist is trying to get you back into, into the relationship. They're trying to draw you back in, suck you back in. Perhaps they're, they're telling you that they miss you, that they've changed, that they want to rekindle the relationship, that they have seen a therapist, that they've seen the light, that you are the love of their life, that they didn't know what they had, etc. There are many reasons why, and those are only a few, why the narcissist will hoover. Hoovers usually come at times of when you are vulnerable, meaning holidays, birthdays, special occasions, anniversaries, things that are important to you. Notice this also that if your relationship ended and let's say you were discarded, most likely you were discarded around a key date, a key instrumental period of time for you. Example, maybe it was your birthday. Maybe you were pregnant giving birth to, your, to a son or a daughter. Maybe it was a death in the family that you were experiencing and right around then you got discarded. Maybe it was around the holidays. These are all meant to inflict as much damage upon you as possible. They're meant to take away beautiful memories and they're meant to disrupt those memories, the aforementioned ones and many others like I mentioned because the narcissist is cruel. They're a manipulator, they're a predator. And what they want to do is they want to get you down in the mud with them and keep you down there. They want you pining for them. They want you thinking about yesterday and about what ifs all of these things. So an individual, which is you watching the channel or on the channel, thank you very much, very much for being here. Until you get the education on the narcissistic abusive cycle, it's difficult for you to wrap your head around what narcissism is because it's foreign to you. You weren't taught this in schools and you were thinking to yourself like, how could somebody be so cruel, so uncaring? How did the relationship begin so well? And then over time it depreciated it just went downhill, 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 and I was giving more and more of myself, and the narcissist was taking more and more of this. And they were being Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. They were blaming me for things I didn't do. They were calling me names. I was experiencing rage fits. I was given the silent treatment for days or weeks on end, which means I wasn't talked to. I was being treated as if I wasn't even a human being. I was being treated less than. Perhaps you experienced the smear campaign when you figured out that the narcissist was telling non untruths about you to your immediate family or friends or social, social circle or business associates. These things are all part of the arsenal of the narcissistic abusive cycle that the narcissist uses against unsuspecting individuals. Now getting back on track with the Hoover. The Hoover is meant to play on your empathy, on your love, on your compassion, on your drive, on your devotion, commitment. In other words, keep in mind, as I mentioned a few days ago, the narcissist knew you better than you knew yourself. That is 100% fact. Because they study people, and they certainly studied you before you were in the relationship, perhaps, while you were in it, absolutely. And many times after the relationship has ended, they are still lurking about. Perhaps they are spying on your social media. Perhaps they're driving by your house. Perhaps they're leaving something on your front porch. Perhaps they are writing you an email. Perhaps they're calling from a phantom phone number saying, hey, how are you? Who knows what they're doing, but these are hoovers and these are attempts to distract you from healing and moving forward and from being the best version of yourself. The narcissist knows this. Many times the narcissist will hoover. Well, there are many reasons, but I'll tell you a few right now. One is because they still see value in you, meaning they want to give you the knockout punch, if you will. They know that you still offer things that they can take from. Perhaps it's financial resources or a house or accommodations or things like that. Other reasons they will, will hoover is because they are lacking supply right now, which means they don't have somebody around them providing what you provided for them currently. So they need to disrupt other people's energy. And in this case, it's yours to see if you will go back for more manipulation and toxicity. This is another reason why the narcissist hoovers. Another reason is because the narcissist believes that you are weak and that they know you better than you know yourself, like I mentioned. However, having said that, when you're getting the wisdom 
You're getting the education on the narcissistic abusive cycle by watching videos, by journaling, by seeing a therapist, a licensed trained therapist, someone who went through the narcissistic abusive cycle, or by writing or reading. And you're understanding all these things. That's when you're getting awakened and becoming aware that in fact you hold the key, you hold the cards, you are the power source that was providing the narcissist their energy. You just didn't know it, but that's the truth. The narcissist knew this the whole time. Remember, what does the narcissist want to do? They wanna take your beautiful bright light. They wanna take your energy. They wanna take everything that makes you you and use it for themselves to build themselves up to the detriment of you. That's what they want. They don't want you living your best life. They wanna keep you as a appliance, a tool that they can plug in and use you when they want to and then unplug you and go get another source when they get jaded or bored. Sorry, but that's how it is. So the Hoover, this is a very confusing thing for people to wrap their head around post-narcissistic relationship. But like I mentioned, if it ended recently for you, my heart goes out to you, but you may be looking for a Hoover. You may be hoping for one or wanting one. I will tell you, wanting one is not, I mean, it's your human being. To want one, I get it, I understand. But sincerely, you don't want the Hoover because if the narcissist is going to Hoover you, it means that they want to really get back and try to finish off what they started, which is keep you in the narcissistic fog, keep on manipulating you, keep on giving you breadcrumbs of hope, keep on having you pining for them, thinking that, that in fact you two were meant to be together or that this is the, a good friendship or things like that. It's not, it never was, it never, it never can be. And the narcissist knows this. That's why they go looking for individuals who don't have the awakening or the awareness, who don't have the education on narcissism. And that was you at one point, but now you're getting the wisdom. And that's a good thing. The other thing is if you never or if you don't receive a Hoover, and many people, I hear this frequently, why aren't I getting Hoovered? What's going on? I'm, aren't I good enough? The truth of the matter there is there are many answers to that. First of all, you are good enough. You've always been good enough. But number two is you shouldn't want a Hoover because if you want a Hoover, that's just, you're looking for validation from the narcissist. And that's the last person you need validation from. Who you need validation from is a trusted and loved support system. Your family, your friends, people that love you, that actually can love you. The narcissist can't fall in love, they don't love. Think about it, every narcissistic relationship is a one-way street to destructionsville. It benefits the narcissist, it doesn't benefit you, it never has. So not getting a Hoover, that's a good thing, that's a badge of honor. That means you weren't tested in that capacity and it means you're getting stronger each and every day. That is what you want. You do not want to be on the narcissist radar. You sincerely don't. You wanna become as small as possible and let them shrivel up and disappear into the darkness. That's what you want. Another thing is, if you did get a Hoover and you didn't accept it, what does that mean? That speaks volumes about your character and about how strong you really are. That means you caught on to this individual who is the narcissist and you won't play those games any longer. Perhaps you got a letter in the mail and you threw it away, ripped it up. Perhaps you got a package, you donated it or threw it in the bin. Perhaps you got an email, you never read it. Perhaps you got a phone call, you blocked the caller. Things like that, that's the path. That's what you must do. You must take action to insulate yourself, if not now, when? Getting the message post-narcissistic relationship is one battle in and of itself. Putting yourself back together is a whole different battle. The Hoover is another, another thing that's frequently in the backs of people's minds. Meaning, let's say the relationship ended a couple months ago or 30 years ago. If the narcissist is still on the planet, they have the ability to Hoover you whenever they want to if they know your whereabouts. That is why I suggest on this channel frequently to block the narcissist, go no contact, delete them and all fly monkeys and people associated with that time frame in your life when you were with the narcissist and live your best life. Another tool, remember, many times the narcissist will try to hoover by proxy, which means they will ask acquaintances or family members or neighbors or people in a community or organization that you are part of, they'll ask about you. And then that person will be a flying monkey with or without even knowing what a flying monkey is. And by the way, a flying monkey is a minion who reports the, the whereabouts of you, what you're doing, and they give the information back to the narcissist. You can be a flying monkey with, with knowing you are one, or you can certainly be one innocently and not knowing you're one. But the point is, is many times people will report back information to you. Oh, I saw so-and-so at the store. They were asking about you or whatever, or so-and-so is doing, and 
you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to hear about that. That, that relationship was over years ago. I'm over it. I healed. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm in a new romantic relationship. I, I have new friends. I've moved. And that's a good thing. So when that happens, when people, people can trigger you or they can report back information to you from a relationship months, years, decades past, which was with the narcissist. And if that happens and you understand you're getting anxious or feeling anxiety or you don't want to hear that information, politely tell those individuals, hey, you know, it really doesn't benefit me. I'd prefer if you didn't share that information with me. I've moved on. I've healed. I've learned. And I'm now living my best life. So thank you. Because that's what happens many times. So again, another part of the Hoover is remember, the Hoover can come out of left field and it usually does. It usually does when you are in a weak or vulnerable position. Many times it comes when you're super strong. But my hope is that you're not always walking through life and thinking, ooh, are they gonna hoover? I don't know, what's going on, should I do it? No, you don't do that, absolutely not. You put yourself in the best position to not be hoovered and you educate yourself to the level that if a hoover does happen, you can identify it. And third of all, you are wise enough now and educated enough now to know to not accept the hoover. And that will send a clear message to the narcissist that you are onto them, you want nothing to do with them. You just want nothing to do with them. So having said that, the Hoover, there's so many different layers to it. Many people are like, like, why aren't I getting Hoover? Aren't I good enough? You're always good enough. You've always been good enough. The reason you're not probably now is because the narcissist has a new source or sources of supply. That's most likely number one. Number two is perhaps they figured out that you're too strong. You're, they, they can't get to you anymore. And number three is if you really think about it, when you are healed properly, and trust me, many of you are really coming across that bridge and you're getting to my side, which means you're becoming healed. You are healed. You're getting stronger each and every day. But if you really think about it, one good indication when you know you're healed is when you don't want a Hoover, you don't think about a Hoover, you're living your best life. That's when you've reached the mountaintop, the pinnacle of indifference. That's when you don't care one bit about the past with the narcissist. You've learned it was a lifelong lesson you had to go through and now you are putting them in the past and you're moving forward. That's a very good indicator if you've healed. So again, to reiterate, in the beginning when the relationship ends, yeah, many people do want a Hoover. I get it. You want closure. You want answers. You want resolution. The narcissist won't provide any of that, number, number one. Number two is many people don't ever get a Hoover. That's a great thing. Number three is you should strive to achieve the level, the goal, the pinnacle of indifference when you don't care and you don't want a Hoover. You won't accept a Hoover and it doesn't even cross your mind. That's when you know you've made it. That's when you know you've healed. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. Remember, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. My hope is you are Hoover free. You're living your best life. You're blocking them and going no contact. All the things I mentioned, but most importantly, you're now focusing on yourself. Remember, each day is a new day. If today wasn't the best day, tomorrow certainly will be better. Continue to invest in yourself and understand that the healing path is not linear. We are all on it, headed in the same direction, simply taking different footsteps. And healing is a direct correlation to how much work you invest in yourself. I'll leave it at that. Guys, I love you all and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye.